This podcast is sponsored by our SA Rock and Metal Fans Facebook page. Strap yourself in because we're set up, switched on, and ready to go. Uh, there we go. I'm good. I'm good yourself. Thank you so much. <laughs> All righty, man. Um, I just wanted. I just want to take a second quickly and just let uh, Warren know because he's stressing a little bit. I just want to <laughs> let him know that I'm here. He doesn't sound. He doesn't sound like the guy. The kind of guy that stresses, man. No, he doesn't. He he stresses like um, like a calm Hindu cow taking a slow walk. So <laughs> you you've got to know Warren well enough to know when things seem a bit tight to him. Uh, no worries, man. You can let him know. It's it's all good. It's all good. I've let him know. I've let him know. So oh, okay, right. How's it going, man? Good yourself, Trevor. All righty, cool, man. Um, so so th- this is Justin from the band The Amblers. Now I don't know anything about the ambler so this is going to be an, an, a first for me so i want to find out from you how this all started sure well um obviously the ambler is just two two members it's jason hinch and myself jason's on drums right and you're I the beardy guy and i sing yes i'm the beard guy <laughs> and um you know jason and i we we've kind of known each other for a while um, in terms of just, you know, South African music, music industry is quite small and you meet a lot of people and everyone kind of knows everyone. And um, that was still, you know, at the time, many, many years ago when, when Jason was still playing with, with, the Black Cat, with the Black Cat Bones. Right. And, um, you know, Jason is an exceptional blues rock garage type drummer. I mean, he's an exceptional drummer full stop. But, um, you know, the blues rock and that kind of thing is definitely something that uh, – Jason kind of, he understands, it, comprehends it well. And, uh, you know, we just kind of, we got, we got jamming together and we decided that, you know, we just wanted to do something simple. We didn't have any huge expectations. So it wasn't like we started out saying, listen, let's, let's have a band and, and let's do this and let's do that. We just wanted to make music. So, you know, we wanted it to be simple. We wanted to use as little as possible to kind of do as much as possible. Or, or get a message across with as few elements as possible. And it kind of started out there. So, you know, we went and we tracked the first EP in 2017, in late 2017, uh, at the SBC Studios. Right. Uh, we got to work on, on, on some of their cool equipment. They've still got some cool cool stuff down in the, in the heart of the beast, down in the dungeon there, <laughs> in the recesses of, of, of the SABC. And it kind of took off from there. So, you know, obviously... People enjoyed what we were doing uh, somehow, and um, you know it was just something that we kept doing. And you know we were lucky enough thereafter to release Radio Old Mo, and we released a whole bunch of singles uh, after that, which we will continue doing. Yeah, I mean, I was just, just going to say, what is the recording process for for the Amblers then, if it's if it's a two piece band, and how do you replicate that live? Yes, I wish I actually knew how to answer that question. I mean, I, I don't know what we, I don't know what we like live. If you know what I mean, it feels the same to us. If that makes any sense, if you know yeah. what I mean, it all feels the same to us. Um, I don't know how people. I mean, I'm not sure how people experience the difference between listening to our, our track material and then you know listening to us live. But I mean, the recording process is as simple for us. I mean, um, everything that we've done thus far, it's not to say that it will never change, but I can say that up to this point, everything that we've done thus far is, is all single takes. Now, um, that doesn't mean that it's a live recording. So that is, you know, because I think sometimes people confuse that. It's not a live recording. It's not like in every single track or in any of the tracks, Jason and I, Jason's there on his drums. and. We've, we've rigged up a couple of mics and we, we're jamming and recording it. That's not what we've done. But Jason's drum, on every single one of our songs, Jason's drum tracks. They're not comps. They're not edited. They're, it's a single take from the beginning to end. And the guitars wow. are a single take from the beginning to end. And the vocals are a single take. So, yes, they are tracked. And at times, you know, if, we've, if we're not happy with the take, or, or that kind of thing, we will take it again. Right. But what, what lands or what ends up on the track and what ends up on the album is a single take. It's a single unbroken moment in time. Yeah. So if we don't like it and we haven't gotten a drive, it has to be taken again. And we take it again and again and again until we have one seamless take of a performance, whether it be the drums or the guitars or the vocals or the overdubs. It's got to be one single take. So that's how we've approached that. Um, and I think for that reason, it does have kind of, 
it will have kind of a lively sound because you know it we, we're not we're not editing out every like oddly bum note like kind of it's it's not bad but it's you know what i mean it's not wrong but it's also not perfect you know we've yeah. left those tiny imperfections but that's inside music. the recording yeah we've left those imperfections in so i trust that we sound pretty close um pretty close live but also then again we never do the song the same twice you know what i mean yeah. start it differently end it differently um you know and luckily because it's just the two of us it does make it a little bit easier to do that there's less uh, to worry about um yeah there's less yeah, complication so, yeah so i, I yeah, get yeah absolutely yeah. yeah there's less working parts moving yes. parts yeah so what is the genre then yeah. is is it blues is it rock is it is it indie or I think it's all of those things and none of them uh if that makes any sense. I mean it's definitely quite bluesy. I mean I love the blues. Jason loves the blues. It's great to write blues songs. Um but I think there are lots of elements of indie kind of stuff. There are or maybe not lots of indie elements, but there are definitely indie elements. There's definitely a lot of garage rock elements just mm. in its simplicity and that kind of thing. Um there's also a lot of folk elements. I mean I I love folk music and I love writing folk songs and I love and I like the slow stuff. Um and we are hoping to do more of that in the future in some of the stuff that we've released there are a few kind of like folky singer songwriting kind of um kind of tracks. Um but no it's definitely not something I mean I, you know the latest track that we've released which is just get me to bed. I mean that track is uh, the the drums Jason doesn't actually play drums on that track. Um it's a, it's a Korg it's a vintage Korg's mini pop drum machine. <laughs> wow. So we okay. try and stick with vintage stuff because that's like our kind of, you know, that's we understand that. We like that. Um so it's a Korg's mini pop drum machine and if we do that live um you know David I mean not David Jason will probably um use like a a machine or something like that just to kind of do that or we'll probably just do it on the drums but in the tracking itself and in the released song it's a vintage Korg Korg's mini pop drum machine um so and i mean the reason that i've gone there is that we aren't stuck anywhere you know mm. if something makes sense and we can make it work and it's different from what we've done before um we'll de- if it makes sense to us and and we feel like we can relay ourselves as the amblers and interpret it back to ourselves you know what i mean yeah in the same way that we'll do it we'll give it a shot we're not you know what i mean we we're not going to be held down i mean we still always want to follow the things that musically make sense to us yeah um but I, but i mean we're influenced by so so many different things so i don't know you know i think it's a bit of a mishmash of of a whole lot of different things maybe we should create a new genre i don't know what we'd call it <laughs> <laughs> mishmash. I don't know what to call it. Yeah, mishmash. <laughs> That would be great. The founders the founders of mishmash. The founders yeah. of mishmash. So, just, but I mean don't get too drunk and yeah. try and say that. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> but I mean I definitely think the core central themes that overarch would definitely be blues and garage rock. No, I've I've seen pictures of you playing guitar uh seated down with on your lap. Sure. So how how did you when was the first time you picked up a guitar and 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 how did you learn to you know eventually do that? Yes, I started playing guitar when I was 10 and wow. um, it wasn't anything it wasn't anything serious though. I mean, uh when I was 10 years old Nirvana, I mean, ha, huh, you know, Nirvana was still kind of in Kurt, Cob- Kurt Cobain had long passed away, but I mean Nirvana was huge when I was 10. I don't know why. But I mean that was really the first real big but that between that and Metallica you know what I mean and that grunge mm-hmm. area was 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 really what I grabbed onto first so when I grabbed the guitar those were the things I wanted to learn I wanted to learn like come as you are you know that little two string riff yeah. and you know the intro to nothing else matters and you know learning how to strum smells like teen spirit and that's really where I kind of got started and 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 you know it was a slow start on the guitar for me because you know as as a as a kid i had an incredible incredible struggle with heroin addiction wow um which i bat- which i battled you know until my early 20s um Jeepers. you know so yeah until my early 20s more than more than a decade i think i started using heroin when i was about 13 years old now how long have you been clean uh, now then i've been clean many many years i don't even know uh, i've been clean since about 2000 and 4 2005 wow. uh, 
the last Kudos time I went you, back man. to Kudos rehab, to break yeah, man, habit the last easy. time I went back into rehab was in 2004 and I came out of rehab, um, kind of like in the beginning of 2005. Wow. So, you know, and that was kind of the last thing. So I, I never, I, I only really managed to um, really focus on guitar, like in a meaningful way when uh, I was clean, if, if that made sense. And yeah, it, makes it wasn't sense. like I, I didn't play and I didn't grow and I didn't that while I was a drug addict, but there was no consistency in it. If you know what I'm saying, I, I would pick it up and I'd put it down and I'd pick it up and I'd put it down and I really struggled to focus my life in any given direction, let yeah. alone just something like, like that. Um, and I mean, obviously for my parents, yeah, being a musician, just that, that wasn't what you do. <laughs> yeah. So I think they, I think they're proud of us now, if you know what I mean. But, um, you know, I think it, it is concerning to have a child who struggles with drug addiction, who wants to be a rock star. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's hard to support your kid. <laughs> well, the, the problem is that those two things go hand in hand far too often. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, you know what I mean? So, but it's not like I, I mean, I'm not trying to say I didn't have support for my folks. I did. I just think, you know, they did the best they can with, with a child that was really, really struggling. I mean, hindsight is a wonderful life. thing anyway. So, I mean, you guess you can look back. at 100%. And, go, well, and, and it's always 2020. That's the beauty of it. You can always look back and, and see. So, yeah, I mean, I, I picked up guitar listening to the, those guys. And, and, and like I was saying earlier, folk, um, folk music has always been a central part of my listening experience. Um, you know, I, I listen to a lot of singer songwriter stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, that flat guitar and guitar on my lap, I mean, the, um, those are Weizenborns or solid body lap steels, if, if, you know, if you know what I mean. So, yes. kind of Ben Harper y, that kind of thing. And I mean, I'm a huge Ben Harper fan. And I definitely, definitely picked up a lap steel because of Ben Harper, if you know what I mean. And then, yeah, kind yeah. of, found my, my, yeah. Sorry, now get going. Oh, yeah, no, I was just saying I kind of found my own way and I suppose my own voice on a lap steel that way. So, so I, I just find it interesting because the first time that I listened to it was a couple of days back when, when Warren sent me the inform, all the information about you guys. And I was listening to it and I was yeah. going, this is very um, different. Sound is very different. The guitar sound is is dirty and, and, and mean, kind of like like angry blues kind of sound. If sure. You, if, you know, yeah. that makes sense. And then I was just like saying, but hang on now. I've heard something similar, like the raconteurs, um, Jack White. Oh uh, yeah. You know, I'm that, a huge Jack White fan, like massive. He's a genius actually. Absolutely. I mean, I, and I think it's difficult. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, it's hard to put into words because I think he's, he's got his own quirks and his own stuff as well. <laughs> But I mean, I think just musically, uh, I, I don't know. He, he, I find him to be quite a genius. Uh, yeah, as no, well. absolutely. So I, would, I would absolutely agree with you. I think. Um, I, uh, think uh, I don't know if you, his if philosophy you know, is incredible. He, he is a, an intelligent person, and I think he's very underrated. Um, he's extremely talented. Sure. Um, but I, I remember seeing a, um, a rockumentary. Um, this might get loud. Yeah. yeah you, you've seen that, right? Yes, I have. No, that 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 intro to that it just to me. Yeah, he makes sum, a he ta Jack takes an old pickup, a yep, two nails, it. and a yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, obviously there are definitely tonal there are definitely tonal aspects of Jack White's general guitaring, I suppose, from the White Stripes to um to what he's doing now, um, that I really love. I mean, obviously, I lean more to the the dirtier analog side of it. Yeah. Um, um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it is a super, super dirty, super mid range, um, very crunchy. I mean, I have a prototype pedal that was built for me by a, by a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Craig, who's, who's, who's a friend. Um, and um, he owns, he owns Craig amps. It's like a small boutique amp company, but he's also a very, very talented, um, um individual and i have a prototype i don't think anyone it never went into production and i managed to get my hands on one and it, Ooh, it is nice it, 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 it yeah like i mean it's not even it doesn't even it, it doesn't even have paint like the controls are written with like a <laughs> with like a black permanent marker like this is the tone this is i mean it's just a metal box yeah and um 
but it's very unique. I mean, I understand why he has put it into production because I mean, those things are expensive to put in production, and you've got to be able to sell them to, I suppose, you know, break even, make your money back, possibly make some money. Yeah. And I mean, it's just it's it's so unique. It's it, 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 it's ugly. I don't know if that makes any sense. The sound that it produces is ugly. Yeah. And in, in order to kind of in order to kind of get it to work, you really have to tweak that thing so carefully because the range of sounds that it can make and the the filters that are inside it that cut certain it's almost like a gated fuzz so it will cut out in the oddest moments it will make sound when you've hardly done anything but, but what i often the, but do but that's the magic take, isn't it because you just don't know what you're yeah 100 percent 100 percent is the, absolutely so what i often do to, to to tame it down is um when i'm either on stage and even when i record i, I use a bi amp setup so i'm using two amps and I'm actually feeding in like a stereo kind of fashion. So I'm actually feeding um, cer a certain section of the pedal board to one amp and, a, and another section of the pedal board to other amps. So that on the one side of the amp, I can have like very dirty, like gated fuzzes that are listen destroying. And then in the other amp, I have a very pure, clean, you know what I'm saying, yeah. true tone. But yeah. if you combine the two together, you know what I mean? Then you have something that's a little more balanced than having a single amp that is just pushing this distorted, you know what I mean? Almost like it, it just wants to pull itself apart. But that, so that, that to me, I'm able to... Sorry, I was just going to say, that to me makes perfect sense because it sounds like a three-piece band. Sure, yeah, it's it's definitely because of the way we amp things up and the way we mic things up because, right. I mean, I'm often using... Um, I'm, I'm using different amps simultaneously, so it's still one take, but I have such a different variation between the sounds coming out of the amps so that I can kind of blend and create a, like a, almost like a full stereo thing where, you know, and a lot of times in my, in my especially in the tracking, because you wouldn't, you know, it's difficult to kind of tell the difference on stage, but definitely in, in, in the recordings, recordings yeah. oftentimes the left hand guitar, none of the, none of the amp, only one of the amps will have reverb on it. So with the reverb will only ring from one, one speaker, but you will hear the sound and the guitars in the other speaker, but there's no reverb in the left. There's only reverb in the right. So it just, you know That's what I mean? And, and having those, yeah, having those different kinds of amps and, 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 and having them kind of be all linked to the same guitar at the same time, the same way that you would plug in a normal amp. It yeah. just gives us a lot of, um, it gives us a lot of options to build a specific sound and blend all of those things together to create. But, that, but that, create. that is that is spot on because that is um, making the the recordings, let's say you, you know release an album or whatever, not one song is going to sound the same thing over and over and over. Yeah, no, listen, I mean, and, and you know, we're grateful for that. You know, they, they, they're so different, um, you know, and yeah, that they have their own That sounds like absolute gold, story. man. I wouldn't get rid of that thing. Yeah, listen, that thing, that thing is very, very cool. Look, some days it drives me absolutely <laughs> nuts. You know what I mean? Some days I just want to break it. But, but you know, if you, if you just, it's also about just, you, you know, kind of like riding a bicycle, you, you kind of start to figure out how something's going to react. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, you do start to play the guitar differently. You start to eke out sounds in a different way because you've kind of learned over time that if I do this, I'll get that. And if I do this, I'll get that. And yeah. then, you know, every now and then you have something that, that comes up that you didn't expect and you can kind of run with that, which is great. I mean, that's what it's about. Eh? You know, at the end of the day, we definitely, you know, we had, like I was saying in the beginning of the conversation, Jason and I had no expectations when we came out. We didn't put that kind of pressure on ourselves. Yeah. We just wanted to make music. We wanted to record that music. And, and you know, if people liked it, absolutely awesome. That's so great. If they yeah. hated it, that's cool too. Because, you know what I mean, we, we, we had so much fun doing it, you know what I mean, and, and putting effort towards it and trying to get it to sound a certain way. And, you know, we're just so grateful that we've been able to keep doing it, you know, and our philosophy towards it hasn't changed. I think, um, I think it's know, an important we, message for up and coming bands is don't put your expectations too high. It's great to have goals and stuff, but concentrate sure. on doing what and, you, and I think you enjoy I doing. Sure, you must definitely have goals, but the, 
the reason you do things must be good for you and healthy for you. I mean, yeah. I think any, any person that picks up an instrument is inspired by what they've heard and the music that they love. And I think it does make sense to say, you know what, I want to, I want to do that. If you know what I mean, I want to be that, but you know, it happens for some and it doesn't happen for others. But the reality is that even if you look at the guys who are, you know, world renowned, they will tell you that they're so grateful that they, that they just get to do what they do. If you know yeah. what I mean, because it's not something that happens to everybody, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Exactly. It, it does. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, you don't succeed or fail because you became a, a, a world famous rock star or not. You succeed or fail because you've learned to craft, you've got better at it, you've managed to get out what you want to get out, you've enjoyed just doing it. That is successful enough in itself, you know. And the thing is, if if your goal is to be famous and have a billion people listen to your music, you know, there are not that many people in the world that ever get to achieve that. If yeah, you know exactly. what I mean, even in the big big guns like. Aren't you aiming for something that, if it happens, is completely amazing and wonderful? But you know, are is your are you going to fall apart and are you going to count yourself as a failure if you don't reach M and M status? If you know what yeah. I mean? If you yeah. don't have forty million listeners on Spotify every month, does that mean that you're a, a failed musician? Yeah. What is your know. expectations? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So. You know, we've we've had a lot of fun, and we've we've it's we've, we're super grateful for it, and we're super grateful. That we I, I, th I think it it shows in the music because it's it's free of prescribed public domain, if that makes fucking sense. Yeah, sure. Thank you. That's a that's a huge compliment. Compliment. Yeah, we don't care. Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what we do. The freedom to do whatever the hell you want to do. Hundred percent. Yeah, Just we don't do whatever. We, hundred percent we don't care and that doesn't mean we don't want people to enjoy our music and experience it and for it to be a part because i think the greatest for me um the greatest desire i have with our music or and and my music anything that i do is is i would love it to be a part of someone's life and a part of their story and a part of their memories in the same way that so much music has been a part of mine. Right. If, if you know what I mean, that is, Absolutely. That, if, if that happens, uh, that, that is what is important to me. And I hope that, that it is, we are, we are like forming a part of people's memories and you know, Hey, do you remember that time when we were flipping out at the waterfall and we were listening, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. It, that, that to me is absolutely incredible. Like yeah. I, I couldn't hope for anything more than that. Um, so, so what, what, you know, and so go on. Yeah. Go on. Oh yeah. No, I was done. <laughs> I was just going to say, so, um, when did, when, what year was all of this, the Ambler started then? 2017. We started 2017, in 2017. Right. So, okay. And the first so recording? 20, well, towards the end, I think, I think in October, in early 2017. So right. we, re we recorded in, in the beginning of 2017 and then towards the end of 2017, in, like October of that year, we released, we released the four track EP. Then right. I think in 2018, we released uh, Ratty Old Mo. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then in 2019, I think we only did one single, which was Birds and the Bees. Right. And then in 2020, we have released two two singles. Now, right. yeah, obviously, we're always hoping to put them t together. Um, you know, I'm I'm still not a singles kind of guy. Although I do understand in today's musical context um, and music business, at times singles does make more sense than. I'm so, um, you know I'm I'm trying to get my head around it because I, I don't understand. You know, if you have the opportunity to record, and I mean, I, I do distribution for for an, um, an artist, Lion Raj, and, and he consistently sure. releases singles. And I'm like, by the time yeah. you've done fucking singles, you could have released an EP. Why, why don't you just... 100%. And, and I absolutely, and that's a battle I fight with myself all day. And my, my main thing uh, is that, you know, for me, an EP at least, like uh, three, four, five songs, there's like a whole story in that. And I like yeah. that. I like the story and mm. I like the, you know, the wraparound. But, you know, it's just, I think that I have been able to, I have been able to see the result of, of singles, let's say, for example, on Spotify. And I hate to say it, but I mean, you know, I, I've seen how different 
people react to a, a single than what they do to, like for example, if you spend, because you're right, it does take the same amount of time, if you know what I mean, although there are certain cost elements, I suppose, that sure. can be reduced. Yeah, but, absolutely. You course. know, what we've seen, what we've seen much more growth on Spotify, for example, since we released singles than we ever saw with the EPs. And is, is, has that got something to do with COVID and people short attention span? I don't know. There's so much I, crap I, out there. I, I do. I do. I think it, I think that people listen to music differently. Mm. Um, and I think that what happens is they want the hype. So basically, they want the hype. It's easy to create hype and to create a public, almost like, um, uh, I don't know what the right word is, like um, to, to build and generate energy around mm. a single than what it is to do it around an EP or an album for small guys, independent guys. Yeah. I mean, I think the big guys, then, you know, release an album, everyone's going to listen to the whole yeah, thing. Exactly. But I think that, you know, you are probably in your EP, you're probably only going to get one, maybe two tracks if you're lucky that really draw a lot of attention. Mm. But what happens is that when you start to gain traction, every single you release seems to gain that amount of traction. Yeah. And so the traction just keeps building. And the thing is, you know what, you can take, because, I mean, we are hoping, for example, to continue at the very least, if we can't start putting EPs together quicker, if you know what I mean, yeah. to at least every three months, like, for example, by the end of January, we'll probably be releasing a new single. We released a single in December or November, at the end of November, and we'll be releasing another single at the end of January. And then we'll probably release another single at the end of March. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is a bit of a weird way to do it. I had never thought that I would, I would do that, if you know what I mean. But um, people are responding to, to that. And it's cool. We get to make music. So we're just kind of are focusing on it at a, a, a track at a time at the moment. But that goes in hand in hand with not having any pressure to release anything. Just have fun. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. I mean, so and it's not that we don't have the content. I mean, Jason and I are constantly in studio. We've probably got like five, six, seven songs pre tracked ready Come to go. On. I, I, no, but this is what I'm saying. <laughs> but 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 you see, the other thing is we've 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 also you know we've also got to trust the people around us. Um, yeah. You know, and we are kind of connected with Just Music now and with Mongrel Records right. now. Right. And you know, they are also really feeling that. Let's just stick with singles at the moment. Let's just keep doing that. And you know what? In the beginning, I was kind of against it. In my own head, I didn't fight people off. I, in my head, I was like, "Okay, you know what? I'm going to do what you said. You, you know, you have connected with us and that kind of thing. So, yeah, okay." But I can, I can say that we have followed that advice, and thus far, it has worked for it's us. Worked. If you know what I mean. And I'm yeah. quite, yeah, and I'm quite sure that you know, if it stops working, everyone's going to say, "Look, let's relook, let's relook at this thing." But what I am hoping to do is I'm hoping that we've tracked enough and we've got enough content by the end of 2021 to have consistently released singles throughout the year or maybe at least for the first half of the year and then by the end of the year to have a full albums with the stuff mm. and just so to, okay. to, to do both base to do both basically but I do I do think that I'm not entirely sure if we're going to manage that I really hope we we will be um, but yeah, let's see. What's uh, what's the the first single in January going to be? It is a song called "The Day I Gave My Sister Away." Um, it is um, yeah, it's proper like balls to the wall, garage amblers, the standard stuff that we do. It's, a, nice. it's, it's back to because look, when, I think when's that, that been released? Even though all of sorry, when, sorry, I was just going to say, when's that going to be released? We don't have a release date. Right, okay, so. Yeah, we don't we don't have a release date yet. At the very at the very worst, it'll probably be released in in the first week of February. We are aiming. We just want to get it completely wrapped up, get everyone's opinions on it, and just get like the thumbs up from everybody, and then sure. we'll send it off to mastering. Yeah, we'll send it off to mastering, and then you know we'll get it back. And then normally, it, you know, it needs to spend about eight days um, in the in the pipeline just to go to all the vetting, you know, all the editorial vetting and all the playlist vetting, right? you know, uh, that kind of thing through Orchard Music and that stuff. And, and obviously that's really what, what slows us down is that process. We want to give all of the, you know, the playlist editors and all of that, those guys time to curate it. It's been very, it's been very positive. I mean, 
um, both both uh, 16 100 year olds and um, and just get me to bed both landed on SA rock essentials they both landed on the new release radar they both landed on um, you know um, new music Friday and a range of other playlists and you know it really is getting it into those editors in time you know what I yeah, mean with enough yeah. time yeah um, to kind Fantastic. of ensure those spots I mean obviously the songs are good and that's not me being I'm just being saying you know it is what it is they aren't bad songs they are great songs yeah and um, you know I think that you know it, you know it shows you that even with a even with a good song, you, you need to follow the right channels and give people the time to hear it and like it and say, we want to put this into that playlist. Yeah. So you know. So yeah. with, with the the COVID in, in twenty twenty and all the shit that came with it, um, live shows and so on. Have you got anything lined up for twenty twenty one, or is it still too early to say? Well, um, we are we are um, on the bill for um, Misty Waters. Mm-hmm. Um, that is set to happen in March. Obviously, it was cancelled in 2020 yeah. because it was going to happen in August, and now it's been moved to March. That's the only really big, big, um, big booking that that we have. Um, I think, and I, I don't even know if that's going to happen because mm. things aren't looking so great right now. Let's no, be honest. So, yeah, 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 and and so Lockdown I have four, no idea. Coming up. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, and I, I, I'm trying not to dwell on it either. It is what it is. Um, yeah, you just got to so, kind of roll with the know, punches. Absolutely. You've just got to do what you've got to do. You know, it's super disappointing. You know, we really wanted to make 2020 a big touring year. And we had started the year off. I mean, we were on tour when the pandemic broke uh, in Shit. Cape Town. Jeez. And luckily, we had, just, we had just finished that section. Um, you know what I mean? But... 2020 our planning as a band and with our management for 2020 was really more about um playing than recording you know what mm. i mean than releasing and it just it just didn't happen <laughs> it just failed uh, so look you, we were really really grateful yeah, yeah i was just gonna say how did you guys manage to do rehearsals in in during the COVID times Oh no, we haven't. Like we, we were on tour. We had just finished the tour, so luckily we haven't done any. No, Jason and I haven't done. We've done a lot of tracking, and we get together and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, when it was level five and you couldn't travel, we didn't do, do anything with that. Yeah. But as soon as the re, as soon as the regulations dropped, you know what I mean, where we you know we were able to freely move, which I think is ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I mean? But able to able to freely move and do stuff, you know. Back to writing, back to up and down. Listen, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Do you like this riff? What do you think about that? What would you do with this? Yeah. You know, back, you know, we do a lot of our drum, or we do all of our drum tracking at High Sea Studios at the moment. Um, you know, we love that drum room. We love that kit that they've got there because they've got like a 60s vintage Ludwig kit there. Like, Ooh, so, nice. I mean, it's, yeah, in a beautiful, and I mean, the guy, the guys, you know, Jock to the sea at at high at high sea. Man's just passionate about recording and passionate more so about recording drums. So I mean, we just get such a great drum sound at that studio. So we've just stuck with that, and we we we've got no reason to change. Um, and we've, we've just been doing that. So as soon as we've got enough stuff, you know, we get into stereo, we track it, it goes into the vault, and that's what I'm saying. We, you know, we haven't stopped working. We're still doing what we can. And we're just waiting for everything to open up and to, you know, start playing. So you can so start, yeah, do, keep doing your thing. So besides yeah. the Amblers, um, usually what I ask um, people that I, that I have a chat with the artists is how many side projects are you also involved in? For myself, I, I'm, right now, I, it's only the Amblers. Right. I mean, wow. I, am, okay. I am, I am, I am, I am busy. Look, Jason has many. I mean, he is <laughs> most uh, drummers do. Borgasm, <laughs> a fi- yeah, Borgasm, official drummer for Bob Van Black. Von Black. He drums wow. for Albert Frost. He he plays. Uh, uh, I mean, it just it doesn't mean Matt Carsten, everybody. Right now, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of focusing just just on the Amblers. I, I have started to write. Uh, I would like to hopefully in this year release like a very chilled solo singer songwriter mm. kind of. Okay. Uh, folk thing but like really some i would say yeah. you know down the line of like very early tallest man on earth you know mm. very simple like um no fluff no nothing you know just a guitar and a voice well recorded wow. folk um, music. well mixed 
Uh, absolutely. So, you know, I live, I live in the mountains between Joburg and Kumalanga. So I kind of stay, I don't stay in the city. Right. Um, obviously, city is not a good place for me. Uh, I've been out of the city for many, I love the city. Yeah. Just not a great place for me for me to live. Right. So um, I kind of live in the mountains, and you know, so it's a great place to write songs. What, what is it, what is it about the city? Is is it a, a sort of like the temptation level, or um, I, I don't know. It's it's not well. I mean, for me, it's not that. For me, for me, the lifestyle wears wears quite heavily on me. Mm. Um, you know, and that's just me personally. So. You know that kind of rat racy uh, traffic. Yeah. yeah. Um, you Pollution. know, it, I mean, some 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 people thrive on it. If you know what I mean, like some people love it. For me, for me, I just get to the place where I want to tear my hair out and escape. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. And that, no, that I, is a I, problem. I totally that get is what you're saying. Yeah, dude, I totally yeah. get what you're saying. I, I lived in London for a couple of years, and that was enough. Sure. Yeah. Totally. Sure. And and that's a problem for me. If I get to that place where like I feel like. I need to get out of this. You know, it, it does. That starts to become attempting. Do you do you get do you get those sort of feelings when you do touring? No, not at all. Um, I've so moved on. Hey, you know, it, this- it, it's it, it's yeah, it's not a struggle for me at all. It's not a struggle for me at all. Um, it's as simple for me as the fact that you know I've worked very hard to build a life and a and a family and and yeah. those kind of things, and they just matter more to me. Yeah, like uh, has heroin is has heroin become terrible? Absolutely not. It was probably the nicest thing I've ever done in my life. Right. But what I have come to realize for myself is that as a very deep truth is the price that I pay for that mm. pleasure is exceptionally high. Mm. I understood, and I'm just not. Pre- you know what I mean? I'm just yep. not prepared to pay that price anymore. And as a kid, it was a struggle because as a as a as a young man. I was prepared to pay any price to have that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. I, I didn't matter what I needed to do. I, that is what I wanted. But, you know, as I started to want to change and get to it, I mean, because, you know, there was a, a, a space, you know, like in my very late teens and, and in my early 20s where, you know, I, I lived on a mattress with no bedding and black coffee and Oma Rusks. That was my diet. If wow. you know what I mean. I had yeah. nothing. Like yeah. I had nothing. And, um, you know, Kudos to you, so, man, you know, for, you get, for fighting yeah, it, man. Sure. Well done, man. You know, yeah, geez. Well, I mean, it's, it, it, it wasn't just me. I had a lot of people around me that didn't give up on me, that loved me, that fought with me, screamed at me. But it's got to come from me. within. Yeah. Somewhere it's got to come from within. And, uh, absolutely. It wouldn't have happened if I didn't want it to change. But you know what? It's, it's, I suppose what it means is that I needed to get to the place where I wanted something different. But when yeah. I finally truly got to the place where I wanted something different, I was in no position to do it myself. I, you know what I mean? I yeah. needed someone to say, we are prepared to help you. Yeah. If you know what I mean? I needed my family to say, yeah, you've stuffed up for so long. But if you want to if you want to go to rehab again, you know what I mean? And if yeah. you really mean it this time. Yeah. You know, and luckily for me, I did get to the place where I was just like, I just don't want to do this. Yeah, thing. helpful. And I just yeah. have no, I, I just, yeah. And I have no power. Because if it's up to me, I'm not strong enough. I'm not yeah. strong enough to walk away from this. I'm going to need you to help me. I'm yeah, going to yeah. need you to help Pick me up and let's and, get um, moving. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. And I mean, I went to rehab in Mozambique. Um, and I... Been, Shit, man. I could think of worse little... places to go and ha- go to rehab. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't too bad. Um, and um, yeah, so... And I ended up... I've probably spent uh, about three cumulatively i've probably spent about three three and a half years wow of my dude, life that's a that's a re- long time in re- man in, re- in rehabilitation centers yeah and then but, but you're you know, all good but so yeah you're all good. solid and you sound now, yeah so that, all that's good. the main thing yeah all awesome good. man so, so i, I want to touch on um we touched on it earlier about the, some of the gear that you have so give me a complete rig rundown yes. okay so Mostly, uh, I do. I do have a couple of guitars, but mostly I will. I'll play um, with a, a Gretsch. Um, mm. That's kind of my go-to. I really like that. You know, bitey. Yeah. It's a very. You know what I mean. Bitey mid-rangey sound that you get mm. from the Gretsch and those Fultatrons. And then I kind of. I've, I've got a couple of standard pedal stuff. You know, I, I have my fuzzers. I have some simulators and, and um, in terms of, but all analog. So um, the only digital unit I have is kind of, and it's kind of hybrid digital is I do have a whammy. 
um, a Digitech Whammy just so that I have octaves and things like that going. Um, my different fuzzes, I definitely have a big muff um, that goes in there. And then that kind of runs into, I've got a 180 watt um, uh, Fender a twin reverb. Wow. So I run that into a twin reverb and that, that twin, that's that Fender twin reverb, that's kind of like my bass tone, my, my clean tone, right. but it's, it's not right. clean. If, if you know what I mean, it's still, it's still crunchy, but that's my, like my pure tone. I like yeah. to kind of term it as that. So kind of run that. So that side of the pedal board, all of the, like the true, um, true overdrives and things like that run into that super twin. Um, and then all of the other stuff. So like the big math and the relativity fuzz and the whammy, they all run into a vintage. Um, I've now just forgotten the name. I can't believe. Um, <laughs> You've got too much equipment, man. Damn it. It, it runs into a Laney, a vintage, oh, like an okay. old vintage Laney solid state. Oh, nice. Um, so like a really nothing fancy about it. It, yeah. it really is quite a, quite a shitty amp, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> so yeah, it really, but I mean, I've kind of, I'm cool with that. That's exactly what I want. So yeah, but it like works a for really you. It adds old, to the sound. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like a really old 30 watts, 35 watts, bashed up, solid state, terrible condition, laney little amp, and then all of my dirty tones and my whammy, my octaves run through that. Um, and then obviously I have control as to, you know what I mean? Yeah. What, how loud, how soft, what goes where, what pushes where. Then I also do have, um, and look, that's not, it's not always set up precisely like that. Right now it's definitely set up like that. Right. And then obviously I do have a, a micro amp, which I put right at the end of my chain so that if I want to really crunch it into, you know what I mean, into the amps, yeah. then I will kind of hit that micro amp and just absolutely blast those It sounds valves. like a um, massive setup. Um, I'm always looking at it thinking that it's quite puny, but, <laughs> but, but, I, I, but I won't make it bigger, if you know what I mean. More, I don't need more than that, no. if you know what I'm saying. That is more than enough. Like, yeah. um, and you know what? Most days I'm actually wanting to kind of find a simpler way to do it. But what I do like is splitting that pedal board in its different tones and mm. running that to the two different amps primarily. Mm. Um, that really has given me versatility and it's allowed me to build like a very specific sound. Um, yeah. And, that, that is, and which that, I that's love. That's key I mean, to me. That, that is key because you've got to be individualistic. And, and that certainly yeah, sure. le lends a hand to that. Yeah, sure. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Awesome, man. Well, Justin, thank you so much for taking the time out to chat to me, man. I, I really appreciate it. You are and, so uh, welcome. It's been, been a great chat. And uh, I, I do like the music. I do like it's 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 different. It's not something that um, I've heard a lot of, other than um, what we've talked about already. But um, it is, I like it. Oh, it's awesome. I dig it. I really. I hope to see you guys play one day live, and let's hope, all hope that that's going to happen sooner rather than later. Oh, I really hope so too. Thank you so <laughs> much for your kind for your for your kind words. Um, that's great. Thank you it's so much. Absolute pleasure, man. Thanks again, Justin. Keep well and keep great. safe, man. Great. Thanks. Have a great day. You too, man. Cheers.